Hello there. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Being Lab with me, your host, Gonzalo Cordova. A lot of you asked for an episode in English, so here you have it. We are going to talk about forgiveness. So the title of this episode is Let's Talk About Forgiveness. Here we go. I am Gonzalo Cordova, and this is Being Lab conversations that transform the way you see the world. Well, wonderful. Thank you for being here. And first of all, I want to say how for some people, the slight thought of forgiving becomes a challenge. Forgiveness or forgiving ourselves or others is typically connected with a sign of weakness or with something that you don't do. You may want to put that event or that sensation that brings a challenge or a problem with someone in the background, in the back burner. So when the time and the right time comes, you can use it to your advantage. And what I'm going to talk about today is an invitation to together to take a look at the, the emotion of forgiveness from a different lens, from a different perspective. My hope is that by the end, by the end of this episode, you will be able to reflect, to ponder, and hopefully get inspired by taking responsibility of the act of forgiveness from a different place. As always, please drop your comments, send your questions. Always happy to support in this wonderful journey called life. So thank you for being here. And the first part where I like to kick off this conversation is from the work of emotions. See, the big challenge we have as human beings in this era is that we learned, I would say 50 years ago, 50, 50 years ago, that emotions were really wrong. And those were things that are going to predispose you to do stupid things, right? That's what our parents or our grandparents thought when they were thinking about emotions. Now, something happened. There was a shift. There was a book. Everybody knows the book, Emotional Intelligence. And from then on, emotions are seen as a cognitive process. I want to challenge that. Emotions, from my perspective, are more of a conscious consciousness process that involves, that requires not only your intellect, but also your body, your gestures, your breathing pattern, and of course, language. So from this perspective, rather than emotional intelligence, I've been proponing, proposing emotional literacy. Not only that, emotionally conscious. That gives you choices so that when emotion comes and visits you, Rather than rejecting the emotion and pretending it's not there, which, by the way, becomes the shit under the rug that then we can't, all, obviously, we are going to have to face it at some point. Instead of that, what ends up happening is that we take a look, we see what's under the rug, and then we take responsibility for it. How do we do that? We ask ourselves, what is anger communicating in this moment? What's the message of sadness? What is happening? It's letting me know about this event or this situation. What in me is producing a learning when an emotion arises that often, 99% of the time, we are not expecting that to happen. And over time, we then can predict and in some way make a choice when it comes to emotions. And so I think that's the an important baseline for us to work today. The baseline is emotions are a predisposition 
to act is what is going to predispose me to do and be in a certain way. Just like, you know, when you eat something super spicy, your predisposition is to calm that spiciness, that hotness, right? We say, this is too much. It's over the tolerance of my glands and I need to calm it down. Well, the same thing happens with anger. It's an emotion. It's something that it's like a flow of energy that you're like, what's happening here? So we need to face that in a different way and relate. And sometimes, like I was saying, our our predisposition with anger is to throw fists or yell or push someone. And that's not a good thing, right? We need to learn to dance with anger dance with sadness or with happiness or remember there are more than 200 emotions and so if we limit ourselves to i'm happy i'm sad or i'm happy and i'm angry well then the spectrum becomes so narrow that we're missing so many other tones and colors that's truly what makes life an interesting journey and so with that baseline Emotions, a predisposition to act in a way that send the message. Let's talk about forgiveness. And I always try to talk to people about forgiveness with the following metaphor. I've always think of forgiveness as one of the steps of the ladder that is going to take us, take us to a peaceful life. Right? So I'll say it again. Listen to me carefully. Forgiveness is one of the steps of the ladder that helps us develop a peaceful life, a peaceful living. So if we, for whatever reason, choose not to forgive, that peaceful life is going to be pretty hard to accomplish. We're going to feel like something's missing because that event that happened when somebody caught you in traffic is going to come back once again every time you are on the freeway, right? (laughs) That's what happens. You're going to be fearful that somebody's going to caught traffic is going to ruin. They are going to ruin my day. I've heard people saying that. Well, if we want to build that ladder, if we want to move into that direction, then we need to recognize that forgiveness is just a step. And we can either choose not to and skip it or be and go part of it. So what's forgiving? What's forgiveness? I'd like to define that for you so that we have the same base, the same distinction. You are always going to hear me talk about distinctions. And what distinctions are is the way in which we interpret the world becomes aligned for ourselves, for each other. That way we can see the same. In this case, the distinction of forgiveness is our ability to take an event or a situation that was in the past producing a sensation of hurt or we were in pain or we were suffering and we are able to transcend that state and we move from resentment or resignation. Okay, that's what forgiveness is. The ability to move from that state. Again, we are not saying that that event was fine. We are not saying that somebody pushing me in the middle of grocery shopping on the aisle while I was trying to grab something is fine. I am not saying that act is okay. Sometimes we confuse forgiveness with not thinking about it anymore or making that act correct. No. What I'm saying when I forgive is that I'm simply taking that event that was hurting me and making amends with myself. I'm able to transcend the sensation that they owe me something, that they are to come and say, I'm sorry. If that happens, wonderful. Sometimes we don't forgive because we didn't hear sorry. That little piece adds a different dimension. But sometimes it doesn't happen. Not a lot of people, not a lot of people have the ability to say, I am sorry. I made a mistake. I made a mistake. I was wrong. They're not going to say it. So 
for me, it's important to drop the expectation of the other person saying sorry, because then the responsibility is mine. And I feel really good about having the responsibility of moving forward. The latter that I was trying to explain begins with acceptance. Then you move on to forgiveness and then on to peace, the peaceful life that I was talking. And hopefully from there you move into ambition, ambition in a positive way in which you want to create a new future, a new way of relating to that person. And so our competence to forgive happens when we are able to accept, forgive, and move on to a peaceful situation. Once again, acceptance is another piece of the puzzle that for a lot of people is going to be a challenge because they think that when I accept, I'm saying that they were right and I am wrong. That's not what I'm saying. Another distinction. Acceptance is just to recognize that the event happened in the past. Past tense. It's back there. I don't bring it here. I recognize that it might have hurt me, but I also recognize my ability to move here, in the here and now. From here, now I can take a look, and whether I choose to forgive or not, I am already in a different situation. I hope this is making sense. Acceptance is the ability to recognize that the event happened in the past. Forgiveness is the ability to say that that happened in the past that caused me pain is no longer causing me pain, making me feel like I'm suffering or I am the victim. I, I'm not, they are not in control of making me feel in any way. And from there, we may move. What is, what is the challenge in, a, in order for us to forgive? Well. Many times we don't forgive when we feel resignated or resent, resentful towards that situation. We think that when we forgive, we are less than the other person, that they won. We think that if we forgive, we are under the boot of the other person, right? That the battle we lost, the battle of whatever situation happened. and. That's truly a high price to pay when we think about it in this way, of course. So the other challenge that we have that prevents us from forgiving the other person is that we've abandoned ourselves to the idea that the other person owes us something. Like I, said, like I said a few moments ago, when we think that as long as they don't say sorry, we're not going to move forward, we're not going to pass this situation, then we're stuck. Also, for whatever reason, we have not been able to find ourselves in acceptance. And like I said before, that's critical in this path to a peaceful life. If we don't accept, we are stuck in the past. Now, our stand towards that situation in many, many times stays in the past and we bring it constantly to the present, to this moment. And so it is as though we've never accomplished the ability to move forward. We are constantly bringing that into the present tense and that it is very, very debilitating. It, is, it takes a lot of strength, a lot of commitment, actually, to bring it into this situation in this moment. So why is it important to forgive? Why is it important to forgive? Well, forgiving is important for many reasons. The first thing that forgiving gives us almost automatically is that it allows us to rest to feel more comfortable. It is as though you're no longer carrying a very heavy backpack everywhere you go. More importantly, if you find you bumped into the person, you no longer feel like they owe you or you owe them something. That is a huge relief for a lot of people. Another critical component 
why is maybe important to forgive is that we then can choose to whether we want to rebuild the relationship relationship or end the relationship it is about us making a decision and that's also something wonderful when we get to make that decision maybe through that event we learned wow I no longer want to be in relationship with that person. I don't want to continue creating futures with you because I just know that that event caused me so much pain. No, thank you. On the contrary, we could say, okay, given that just happened, can we sit down and talk about how we build a relationship when you don't hurt me this way or I don't hurt you or we don't do whatever happened again? So that is another wonderful tool that forgiving gives us. The third thing is it opens possibilities to create standards, to create agreements, to, like I said, sit down and say, moving forward, these three things, these five things can no longer happen for us to continue in this business relationship, personal relationship, whatever that is, family relationship. And so the fourth one is, and for me, it's one of the most beautiful ones, is it's important to learn because that's how we learn that forgiving is part of the cycles of life. Chances are this that just happened is going to repeat again by someone else in a different form of, or shape, but Life constantly is giving us the opportunity to learn. So might as well learn to embrace the muscle of forgiveness rather than pushing it away and not learning that ability. At this point in this type of conversation or workshop, when I offer those, people ask, okay, everything sounds wonderful, but how do you forgive? How? Let me know, how can I forgive that person that, you know, how do you forgive someone that damaged you, your family? Absolutely right. That's a great question. How? And this is not me saying that all these concepts are the right way or the only way. I'm just offering a path. If you choose not to follow this path, best of luck. But if you choose to follow this path, let me know because I love to be with you down the road and meet you and help you, support you, finding ways to forgive the even the most unthinkable things that you could forgive. There's always a way. But there's a factor, an important factor, which is time. Many, many times, in order for us to forgive, we need to simmer. We need to marinate the event. It's maybe a little too soon for me to even ponder on the idea of forgiving you. I may not be ready. And so when we factor that time, then it's okay. We're not in a rush. We may lose a relationship. But guess what? We gain and we learn how do we relate with people that cause this or that? How do I relate with myself when I don't know how to forgive myself? And we're going to talk about it in a few moments. The, the act of self-forgiveness. So how do we forgive? First of all, I think it's important to state the obvious. Something that we don't actually do, which is recognize what happened. Regardless of what the other person did or did not do. Once again, I need to recognize what happened. Because although this one sounds extremely obvious, we, as human beings, develop these mechanisms of pretending that nothing happened. And a lot of people use a social lubricant called alcohol, drugs, to run away from those situations or forget about drugs and alcohol, they may go to a party. They may take the family on vacation. 
trying to pretend that the event did not happen. And so when we develop the ability to stop altogether and say, wow, holy shit, that was critical. That moment in our company, we were about to lose everything. We almost went bankrupt. Let's let's press the pause button and take a look at what happened to all of us as a system in a family that is so valuable when a parent says, guys, we just faced a terrible situation. How do we move forward together? How do we forgive? We're not ready. Okay, at least let's take a look. What's causing me? What's happening to me? So that's the first one. The second part of how do we forgive is to take a look at the assessment that we made of the situation and what's the fact that happened. I'm going to tell you a brief story. The other day I was at the grocery store shopping and someone was waving at me someone with a mask that I did not recognize. And I literally ignored the person because I was like, what's going on? Who is this person waving at me? I even thought well, they may be saying hi to someone else. I turned my face to see if someone else was there and nobody was there. I thought this is a crazy person trying to say hi. And I just waved shyly you know very shy and say bye who are you and i left i was grocery shopping i was on the phone also but later on a co-worker tells me i cannot believe that you saw me and you dared not to say hi how could you i will not forgive you for ignoring me and the assessment that i made is I don't know this person. The fact is that that person was a co-worker, but I had no idea. How could I? I Under the mask, we all look different when we're wearing it. And so what I disclosed to her is like, wait a second, my apologies. I do want to apologize. However, I feel like you were not recognizable. Therefore, I don't feel like I owe you truly an apology in the sense that it was not a mistake. I just couldn't see you. So can we agree that it was not intentional, that I did not ignore you, but really critical, I did not recognize you. And in that moment, her face changed. There was a huge shift. Her demeanor changed. She was, oh, is that so? Yes. Oh, then forget about it. No worries. Yeah. How could you? You weren't able to see me. Precisely. So the second step is to detect. What was the assessment? The assessment. And what was the fact? See, when you put on the table the objective and the subjective, many times the way in which we get triggered or the reason why we get triggered is not so much because of what happened, but because of the assessment that we made about the situation. So there you go. That's an important tool. The third one, the third one sorry, is to ask ourselves, what's the cost for me if I do not forgive? Many times the cost is great. Because if that person is our boss <laughs> or our partner, business partner, or our spouse, well, we're going to carry that through our, our lives. And it's going to be very painful. Many times there's no cost. Forget it. That's fine. You can move forward. Another way in which we forgive is to first go through that ladder that I mentioned in the beginning, which is called acceptance. I'm not going to repeat it. You already know it. Take a look at it. And when we arrive finally to peace, hopefully, that's when we forgive and forget. Most likely. We can actually go back to the person and see them face to face. And we no longer think about the situation, about cutting in traffic or, you know, running a scam on us. 
It's difficult. I know. It is difficult. It can be very difficult, but it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to be difficult. You just need the right tools. And that's one of the things that when we don't have the right tool, we think this is impossible. I would never be able to do so. But when you have the tool, you can actually make it. You can actually make it happen. It's like trying to rock climb a rock, right? I don't know, Yosemite without equipment for 99% of us, that's unthinkable. Only a few can do it. We've seen documentaries about these amazing things that people do with just bare hands. But for most of us, beginners in this type of sport, we need a lot of tools. We need a lot of technique. I just gave you the tools and the technique. It's also there. The last thing I want to mention before we end this episode where we are talking about forgiveness is, but what happens when we need to forgive ourselves? That's an interesting journey. Many times we don't forgive ourselves because we say, we think that if we forgive ourselves, I become a bad person. I recognize that I'm actually bad. I'm in the wrong. Well, maybe it's time to surprise yourself forgiving yourself. Also, another reason why we don't forgive ourselves for whatever thing, reason, or action you took is because we think that we are going to make the same mistake again and we are going to hurt once again. As parents, I don't know if you are a parent, I am a parent of a teenager currently, and often I find myself thinking, how am I going to forgive myself for what I just did? A few days ago, I was thinking about something I did when my daughter was six, and I was reflecting on, boy, she's going to need a lot of coaching and therapy because I messed up. I need to forgive myself for that mistake. So forgiving yourself becomes with acknowledging that, guess what? We're going to continue making mistakes, hopefully not as deep, hopefully not as painful, that this is the opportunity to make amends with ourselves. Two more things to tell you why and how do we forgive ourselves, not others. When we forgive ourselves, guess what? You go back to peace. Just like when you forgive others. All of a sudden you can sleep well. All of a sudden you are able to rest, to walk around without hiding from something or someone. And that's a wonderful sensation. I invite you to explore. And the last one, give yourself time to heal and forgive when the right time comes. Do not feel pressure at all, whether it's towards yourself or towards others. Remember, in the emotional domain, which is an internal language, you are in control. And if you are not in control, please let me know. I would love to help you to be in, quote unquote, control so that you can move around life with more ease when emotions arise. Remember, more than 200 emotions. And if we go through life like a pendulum from one to another, not even knowing what they are, we cannot acknowledge the message and then move forward. Well, there you have it, folks. I hope you liked this conversation. I hope you enjoyed this. I thank you for being here. Please drop your comments, send me your questions. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Take care. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening Being Lab. You can follow me on social media at Gonzalo Cordova. Please like and follow. And thank you for being here.